Hello everybody, my name is Cole Blue, and I'm going to be um, recording this video here to kind of walk us through setting up, um, sorry, setting up connecting a Mariah DB server with the uh, Libre base um, GUI interface, the, the user interface, I guess you should call it. So, so the whole entire purpose of me making this video uh, is that in my journey to kind of play around with uh, SQL and just kind of have a little fun with that, um, I found a document that kind of talked talked you through how to set things up uh, independently, but I couldn't find all the information I needed at one spot. So I decided to go ahead and just make a video, since I finally figured it out, um, to kind of walk through this process, and uh, maybe it'll be helpful for you. So um, I will have in the description um, all of my references listed there. So that way, if you want to read a little bit more in depth on some of the details that I might go over, or just kind of do your own research on some of the other settings and options that you have, please check out the description and you'll find out more information from there. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this. So what I'm going to be doing, or so my current setup that I have is I have two Raspberry Pis. I have a Raspberry Pi 8 gig, which is the one that we're looking at. And then I also have a Raspberry Pi 400 uh, that's going to be acting as my desktop um, both have Raspbian. This one has Raspbian minimal minimal install, so it just has a command line. The other one has Raspbian with the, the full desktop user interface. So what we're going to do is, like I said, we're going to walk through the steps of setting up a MariahDB or Mariah database, uh, which is basically just MySQL uh, database for Linux-based devices. And we're going to connect that to the uh, LibreOffice base system, uh, which Theoretically, these steps you can follow through with anything else. So if you have a different thing like a SQLite or something else that you might be using, this should work with those following similar steps. The um, key difference is that you have to, you know, use the use the appropriate settings in your in your uh, actual interface, your actual GUI interface, to kind of connect it. But as far as setting up the Pi goes, this is going to be the same. So going into the steps, first thing we're going to do is we're going to do the very basic things of doing the um, updates. So, of course, with anything, this is a relatively fresh um, install of Raspbian OS Minimal Edition. So, um, I've already run these commands. So, let me go ahead and run those here. But we're going to do the sudo apt update. We're going to let that run. Like I said, I've already run mine and restarted, and it's all fresh and ready to go. So, it's not going to say anything update needs to be updated, but if you need to update yours, update yours. And then we're also going to run the sudo apt upgrade and once again if those commands need to you know do the thing and reboot it'll probably take about maybe two or three minutes feel free to pause the video while you wait for your stuff to restart so now that we've done that uh, i'm actually going to suggest an extra step so if you have a raspberry pi and you're connecting through wi-fi you might have to do the step first but you have to go into the system configurations so I did the uh, sudo raspy-config, and that brought me to the system configurations here. Um, and then I'm going to go into system options. And from here, you can set your Wi-Fi settings. I'm connected through Ethernet, so I'm not going to bother setting that up. And uh, most importantly for me, I'm going to change the host name because I like doing that. Uh, I changed the host name already to basepy uh, before I did my reboot, so I'm going to keep it where it is. And uh, you can do that and then reboot if you need to. And let me just control L to clear the screen. So now that we've got that set up, that's kind of our baseline set up the Pi. Now we're going to go ahead and install and initialize the MariahDB. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually install MariahDB. So sudo apt install Mariah, M-A-R, so M-A-R-A, M-A-R-I-A. Oh, there we go. So we do the sudo apt install MariahDB, and then this is going to take a little bit to actually install, so we're going to let it do its thing. I'll just uh, pause here and fast forward through this. All right, after that's finished installing, uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and run through the initial steps for securing your, um, your MariahDB service. So we're going to do this command, sudo apt install uh, Mariah db dash oh sorry no, my my sql whoops sorry i get a little ahead of myself um sudo my sql 
underscore secure. Yeah, sudo space mysql underscore secure underscore installation. And we're going to run that. This is going to basically run us through some security prompts um, to basically set up our Raspberry Pi. So I'm just going to go ahead and run through this. So the first thing it's asking me, it says, in order to log into your MariaDB, then you set a password. Uh, if you're just installing MariaDB and you haven't set a password yet, the password will be blank. So you should just press enter here. So I'm just going to press enter here. And then it's going to ask me, do I want to set a password? So setting the root password ensures that nobody can log into the database without the root, root authorization. I say yes. And it's going to ask me to type a new password. So this password I'm going to type in is going to be pass. And then I'm going to type a new password, retype the password P-A-S-S. -S. All right, so that should be set successfully. It says by default, it's going to have an anonymous user that's going to be allowed that allows people to log in. I'm going to say, uh, yes, remove the anonymous user. I don't want the anonymous user there. This one says, uh, do you want to disallow root login remotely? I'm going to say, yes, we're going to disallow the remote login for root. And it's asking me, do I want to remove the test database? I'm going to say no to this because I actually want to see the test database there. And last but not least, it's going to ask me, do I re want to reload the privileges? I'm going to say yes. All right, cool. So that should be all set. That should be all applied. Um, if everything goes the way I wanted it to, uh, we should have the ability to install into our or sorry, log into our database using the root password. So I'm going to go ahead and log in. So sudo my uh, my sql my sql yeah oh that's why there you go sudo my sql dash u root dash p and um, I'm going to type it in this way. Oh, okay. All right, never mind. Take it back. <laughs> so, so um, I did do this a little bit earlier, and for some reason, whenever I typed in the password during the security prompts, it didn't accept it. So, uh, I think it's something with the way I did the configuration. So, the password is blank here, as far as I understand it. But what I was, what I also wanted to try to demonstrate there, is that if you um, have everything set up, hopefully with the proper login credentials. Whenever you type in your sudo login here, you can put your password in after the dash P, or alternatively, you can not put your password in after the dash, after the dash P, just in case you don't want to type it in and have it visible, and just type in a dash P with a blank, with nothing else at the end, like I did here. And this is going to actually prompt you to enter your password. Since my password is apparently blank, I'm just going to hit enter. It's going to get me into the database. So I'm logged in as root right now into the database. So first things first, let's go ahead and show the databases we have. Oops, it's proper. And you can see that the databases that we have are just information schema, MySQL, and then performance schema. So that's all we have there. So now we're going to go ahead and create a database just for posterity reasons. Uh, create database. Uh, I'm going to call this one video DB. Uh, hmm. uh, I think I dispelled something wrong. Hold on. I'll try that again. Uh, oh, okay, okay. It doesn't want the quotes. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, bad. All right, there we go. So the database is created. It didn't want the quotation marks around it. Um, and if, if you're going to do the quotation marks in there, I think it need I think it need needs back ticks. So I was going to try this. Just test this out. Just make sure. Yeah. Okay. So so you have to use the the tilde the tilde button. Uh, well, the the back tick, I guess you can call it. So I should have two data two databases. One's called uh, VideoDB. One's called Video Test. Oh, sorry, video DB test. So we're going to go ahead and show databases again. And yeah, so we have video DB and we have video DB space test. So those are my two databases. I'm not really here to walk through the commands, just basically uh, kind of get that set up so we can have some something to look at. All right, so now that we've done that, we basically have uh, MariaDB initialized and set. We have a few tables listed there, a few databases that we can go ahead and use for reference. Uh, we're going to move to the next step, which is an important step, which is to set up the MariaDB from this device for remote connectivity. 
So in order to do that, we're going to go ahead and type in, or we're going to first locate where our configuration file is. My configuration file is located in um, slash uh, Etsy slash MySQL, and it's called my.cnf. Uh, yours might be located in a different place. Please refer to the documentation or the link that's in the, the description because it'll have uh, all the places that can possibly be listed. But we're going to go ahead and see if we can locate mine. So I'm going to go. So the file I'm looking for is the my.cnf file that's listed there, the, the light blue one. And we're going to go ahead and open that up for editing. So sudo nano my.cnf. And in this file, we're going to look towards this bottom section. So what we're looking for is we're looking for if you have the information set the way I think uh, most might have it set up, or at least some might have it set up, uh, there should be some files down here towards the bottom. Or sorry, there should be some entries down here towards the bottom that says uh, my SQLD uh, in a little square brackets. And it should say skip networking um, and then some other stuff and then bind address uh, equals and then the IP address of your device. Um, in my particular case, I don't have that listed, so I have to actually do something else. But if you have the skip hyphen networking and the line um, bind hyphen address equals and then your IP address or some IP address, um, you have to comment both of those out by putting in the pound sign like so. But in my case, I don't have that information. So what I had to do instead is I had to actually enter in um, enter in this, uh, type the section in basically. So my SQL D and I'm going to type in two commands to tell the Mariah DB to not bind the address locally. And, and there's a document that talks about this specifically. I'll, I'll once again, check out the description. It'll, it'll have the information there. So I'm going to type in skip hyphen networking equals zero and skip hyphen bind or dash address. And then after I do that, I'm going to save this. Let's say yes. So I do control X to, to exit out. And then I said yes to save the changes. And there we go. So the changes are saved. I'm going to clear my screen with control L. And now that I'm here, um, I should have it set up to where the MariahDB is not going to automatically bind the, uh, the networking aspect of things to the local local setting. So next I'm going, to go ahead and, I'm going to go ahead and create the user that we're going to log in with. So in order to do this, I'm going to first log back into uh, MariahDB. So sudo mysql-u roots-p and then int enter again. And once I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and type in this command. And this command is, well, for, first, let's go ahead and check out the user that we do have. Uh, this is a good check just to make sure. So I'm checking to see what user I have. And once again, this is from the documentation directly. I'm um, just kind of a preliminary step. You don't have to do this one. And this is a uh, single quotation mark. So what this shows me is this will show me all the users that are able to log in um, that are remote users. Um, in my case, I don't have any because I haven't set anything yet. So it says empty set. So now I'm going to go and actually add in the user. So we're going to type in uh, grant all So uh, this first part is a uh, grant all privileges on, uh, and this should be this device to, and we're going to grant it, we're going to create our user. So my user, I'm going to go ahead and name cool blue, C-U-L-B-L-U, -L -L and close the single quote at symbol, open the quotation mark. And now we're going to go ahead and type in our IP address. My device's IP address, if I'm not mistaken, is 192.168.1. And then... Uh, star symbol. So what this is telling it is this is telling it to create this particular user, Cool Blue, that has the ability to log into this device uh, through the network um, of the 192.168.1 dot and then um, wildcard. So pretty much anything that's on my local network within this range, Cool Blue can log in from a device. So if I'm on a device that can connect in, I can do that. And this is kind of just the extra security setting. Uh, you can leave it wide open if you want to, but it's a little bit better for you. Make it more specific. 
and we're going to say identified whoop, by and identified by is going to be the password I'm going to set. So for cool blue, I'm going to set the password to be uh, YouTube. And then we're going to say with grant option. So that will give me all of the permissions that I need. So, well, spell something wrong. I think I spelled privileges wrong. Um, of course, make sure you have your spelling correct. So let's make sure I got this correct. Is. All right, so that should be good. All right, so it's done. So that has successfully run through. So now we're going to go ahead and run the previous command that I ran, and now we'll see that Cool Blue is a user who can connect through the network um, of the 192.168.1 wildcard. Um, so that's all set. Um, last but not least, we're going to go ahead and uh, restart the MySQL service before jumping over to the last part of this. So I'm going to exit. And in order to restart the service, we're going to type in this command, sudo service mysql restart. And that should go through. Cool. All right, so that went through successfully. So now that we got that through, I'm going to switch over to my other computer. So bear with me here. And once this is loading up, hold on. There we go. All right, so now I'm on the actual other computer. This is a different device. And we are going to open up LibreOffice, LibreBase. And in LibreBase, we're going to do this in a, in a very specific way. So when you get into the here for the database wizard, you can click on the option. We're going to use the third option for connect to an existing database. I'm going to go ahead and select the My, MySQL, which is what we're using. Um, MariahDB is basically MySQL. And after I do that, I'm going to click on Next. So once I'm here, you have two options. You have the uh, open database connectivity or the Java database connectivity. Um, I'm following the information that was given by uh, Life on Linux. So a huge shout out to, to that person from YouTube. Um, they basically provided a third method that seemed to be a little bit more direct and straightforward. So I'm going to follow that method. I'll, I'll link in the description to the video so you can have some more information about how to do that. But we're going to add a third option to this list. In order to do that, we're going to open up our terminal window on the target pie that we're using that's going to have the GUI interface. And I'm going to go ahead and log in. Or sorry, I'm going to go ahead and uh, enter the command, which is sudo apt git install uh, libreoffice dash my SQL MySQL connector. We're going to run that. It's going to take maybe a few seconds. So now that's done, that's basically added a third option into our LibreOffice base. I'm going to go ahead and close out of this and then open it up again. And we're going to go through the same steps we did before. Connect here, use MySQL, and then hit Next way down here. And we now have a Connect Directly option. So using the Connect Directly option, I'm going to click on that. I'm going to hit Next. And we're going to type in the database name, which in our case was uh, video DB, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, video DB. So this has to be in the name of one of your databases. For me, it's video DB. I'll just use that one, for example. Uh, for the server, this is the IP address of the other device. So uh, just in case you want to check that, um, I'm going to type in the name, which is basepy.local. So the IP address. Right, control C to exit out of that. But the IP address of that should be 192.168.1.124. So what I type in, I just type in basepy.local, name of the pi, which is why I like to change the name of it. So I know which device it is. And then type that in there, hit next. Uh, we're going to type in the username, which for me is cool blue. And the password, say the password is required. We're going to test the connection here. And I'm going to type in the password of YouTube, which is what I typed in before. We're going to hit OK and connect and test successful. So good, we got a successful message. Now we're going to go ahead and hit next. 
And these are the options. I leave this on the default. You can change them, play around with them if you want to. I'm going to click finish. And I'm going to save my database to YouTube demo. Save that. And now here we are within um, Libre base and it's connected to the databases on the actual other Raspberry Pi. So on my eight gig uh, on my eight gigabyte RAM Raspberry Pi, um, it's actually running Mariah DB. And on my Raspberry Pi 400, we have a connection to it through Libre base. So now I can just basically do my queries or make tables or import information, do all kinds of fancy things that I might want to do from here without having to use the command line. Uh, interface, or I can go vice versa and play around with it. So that's pretty much it for the video. Uh, hopefully it was very useful. Once again, please check out the description below so you can uh, check out the uh, documents that I reference and trying to get all this information together in one spot. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to let me know. I'll do my best to try to answer them. Um, but otherwise, hope this video was useful for you guys. And thank you guys for watching. And as always, I'll see you guys whenever.